Good morning, church. How's everyone doing today? Great. Amen. So today we're going to go ahead and read from Psalms chapter 27, verses 1 to 2 and verse 4 as well. So it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. If an army encamps me against me, my heart will not fear. If war arises against me, in spite of this, I am confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes so we could begin the service with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, I want to give thanks to you for granting us another day of life. We appreciate for always being by our side, especially in hard times. God, we pray so that today we have a wonderful service, God, where we get to learn more about your word. We appreciate you for blessing us, God, and for also giving us a, a great welfare. We also, Lord, ask that you may bless the men, members of the ministry so that they could pour their hearts, pour their hearts uh, to you, God, and that you may also help us, God, throughout our daily lives. Thank you, God, for everything and for all you have done. In the name of Jesus, amen.
shout it out and glorious. Make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glorious. You are glorious. My God, you reign forever.
lift up our eyes, see the King has come. Light of the world, reaching out for us. There is no other name. There is no other name. Jesus Christ, our God. Oh, seated on high, the undefeated one. 
There is no other name. Amen. How's everyone doing today? Excellent. Excellent. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's go ahead and walk over to our neighbors and say hi. Good morning. Bless each other. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. You, you may all be seated. Let's start it off with the prayer requests. Anyone have any prayer requests? Sister? Daughter have baby. Okay. The 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 trip? Okay. Trip. Excellent. Okay. Anyone else have a prayer request? Sister Wanda. Education, got it. <laughs> <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh. The, the, the live stream. Nice.
Yes. It's all spread out, right? Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. She's found her, her place now. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll, I'll, we'll pray for her. Um, anyone else? Prayer requests? Back there? Marco? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and pray. One more. Oh, one more? Go ahead. Amen. Okay, Heavenly Father. Please give us your mercy and your, your wishes for Martita. Her daughter is having a baby, and please guide her and protect her on her trip to go see her daughter, and that everything goes well with the pregnancy and the baby. Please, for Sister Wanda's family, her two grandchildren, getting their education one's going to be a pharmacist and the other one's doing her master's degree give them the knowledge and the strength to finish their schooling and to do it in your hope and your glory father and that they be successful and the one that works at fedex and is teaching now thank you for bringing her home to you and having her to go to church bringing another one of your children closer to you. And last but not least, Sister Wanda, Sister, amen. Make sure that she gets healed and everything is great and nothing else arises from her surgery. Amen. Okay. Um, let's distribute the offerings or... Uh, Ushers can distribute. If you need a envelope, just raise your hand. Okay. Anyone have any praise reports they'd like to, to share? Okay, sister? Okay. In May? <laughs> Yeah. How's that going? Good? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. That's good. Good thing. Yeah, my daughter's going to graduate in May, too. Yeah, at, uh, in the high school. Yeah. Anyone else have praise reports? Yeah, sister. Yes, we had the toothache. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The pain was gone, see? Praise the Lord. Give it up for her, please. Excellent. See, I always said that about this church. Um, God grants our, our prayers here. I've never seen anything like it. And <laughs> Wonderful. The Lord did heal you. That's the best medicine right there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
Yes, exactly. Amen. That's great. Uh, anyone else? We got another one? Okay, <laughs> yeah. This Saturday? heal now <laughs> hallelujah amen yeah it's you know faith believing it's all you need and if you really believe he'll heal you definitely okay so we'll go ahead and go with our announcements uh this thursday the 18th 6 30 p.m young adults meeting so any young adults we got a meeting thursday the 18th at 6 30 and then on Saturday the 20th, Mexico Outreach, thank you for your prayers and your donations. If anyone has more donations, you know where to put them, in the north end over there. And Sunday the 28th, we'll have Eunice Angeles, missionary to the Philippines, as our guest speaker. So that's going to be fun. Absolutely. It's good to, good to see her and get her word out. And we're still looking for volunteers for VBS, so if anybody wants to step up to the plate, let us know. Um, any birthdays or anniversaries out there? No birthdays? Excellent. Okay. We'll give it up to the pastor. Thank you very much. Bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Can you say amen? He is wonderful. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, I also want to thank the Lord and, and you for your faithfulness because uh, we were able to fix the roof of our oldest building on the north side, on our north facilities. And um, I want to show you some pictures. Can you put the first one? This is the old, the old uh, roof, the old shingles. There's a part that is shingles and the other part part is a, a flat roof so you can see there another side of the shingles and I think we have another one there you go that roof has been there since we came over 30 years ago and I don't know how, how long more was there before we worked before we came so it was over 30 years ago now this is our new roof amen look at that isn't that beautiful <laughs> praise the Lord look at that Let's see the last one. Beautiful. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to confess something. I never like when it rained in Yuma and Winter Hill. Never. Because I, we always had uh, leaks in our roofs. No more. <laughs> no more. Uh, let's see the flat uh, surface. Look at how, it, how bad it was. Let's see the next one. Look at that. Can you see that hole right there? And that's the other part. And look at the new one. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice. Yes. Let's see the last one. Beautiful. Brand new. Praise the Lord. <laughs> My kids always told me, how, can you, how, how come you don't like uh, uh, rain? So beautiful. That was the only reason. <laughs> That was the only reason. And the other one is that uh, in Guatemala, we only have two seasons, winter and summer. And, uh, of course, uh, winter is six months. It rains a lot. So 
I was up to here. I love this weather. Do you? <laughs> Maybe not, not some of you, huh? <laughs> but I love this weather. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. And uh, I also want to ask you for your prayers. This week, tomorrow Monday, we're going to our network conferences. And uh, we're going to be there for three days. Uh, well, more because we're leaving on, on Monday and coming back on Friday. Conferences are from Tuesday through Thursday. And, of course, we have uh, beautiful services. And praise the Lord for that. But also we have uh, business meetings and things like that. So uh, pray for us. Amen. Our, our leaders need your prayers. We, have you seen some other denominations go astray? Amen. We need to keep uh, straight but from here to the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm, amen. So pray for us. All right. I'm going to invite the children to go to their classes right now. And we're going to get ready to worship our Lord with uh, our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. And uh, thank you to the teachers. God bless you. We're going to read in Psalm chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. And uh, the word of God says, may, now listen to this. This is, of course, I, if I'm not, if I'm correct, this is a psalm from David, but we can assume that this is the desi this is God's desire too, and it says, "May the Lord answer you on a day of trouble." How many of you would like the Lord to answer in a day of, of trouble? We all do. And then it says, "May the name of the God of Jacob protect you." We need His protection. Verse two. May he send you help from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. And verse 3, may he remember all your meal offerings and accept your burnt offering. Of course, uh, he's talking about Israel. They were the ones who presented those types of offerings, meal offering, burnt offering. Uh, today, we, we bring our tithes and offerings, but this is the thing. It says, may he, may God remember all your offerings. And I was thinking, well, for God to remember something, that something needs to happen. <laughs> and that's why we bring our offerings, we bring our tithes, and then he will remember. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's pray. Father, again, we thank you this morning for, you are, for your faithfulness. You are a faithful God. Every morning uh, we wake up and we have food, we have a roof, we have all of your blessings, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, and help us to be uh, faithful as you are. Bless your people, Lord. Bless every person. Bless every family that belongs to this congregation. In your holy name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shout it out and glorious. Make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glorious. You are glorious.
Now, Daniel was here this morning, but he had to leave. He had a, some kind of stones somewhere here, <laughs> and he was in pain. Have you, some of you experienced that before? Amen? So, I'm going to ask you to keep him in prayer. Amen? He had him before, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be okay. Uh, but uh, probably you already know that uh, Iran sent some missiles and drones to attack Israel. So, Israel, again, is under attack. Not by Hamas or Hezbollah, but... Uh, this time by the country of Iran. And uh, those are signs of the last days. So I would like to pray for, for Israel and uh, also for, for Daniel. I'm going to ask Brother Brother Vincent, can you pray for Daniel and, and Israel right, where, right there where you are? Amen. Thank you, Brother. Praise the Lord. And uh, keep uh, Israel in, in your prayers. I said this before, but uh, it's good to remember. Israel is the only nation created by God. And uh, the Bible says that uh, it is the, uh, I always forget a word when I need it the most, the pupil of apple of his eyes, Israel. And whoever touches Israel has to give an account to God. So pray for Israel. And uh, I remind you that we're living in, in gentle times. The Bible calls this time the, the time of the church, of the Gentiles. And this is going to end when Jesus lifts up the church. We're going with the Lord. And then comes seven years of great tribulation. And uh, in those seven years, Israel is going to suffer mightily. And uh, they, they, they had to pay a great price for being the people of God, the special people of God. So uh, pray for them. Always pray for them. Uh, the good thing is that during this, those seven years, many... Jewish people will believe in Jesus. There's going to be 12,000 preachers from the uh, Jewish preachers dur during the tribulation. And at the end, as Brother Vincent was uh, praying, uh, the people of God will call to the Lord 
and he, he will come back and he will defeat all those nations that came against Israel. But we do good always praying for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that God, Jesus, always has something more and better for his people, for us. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Jesus always has something more for us. Let me read you what Ephesians 3.20 says. Now to him, he's talking about the Lord. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. And what is that power? Of course, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. But uh, again, Jesus is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think. We can have or we can think of great plans for our lives according to us, according to our minds. We can, when we are in need, we can ask God for his help or for something. But do you remember that the Bible says that we don't know what to ask? <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Of course, we ask according to our uh, intelligence, according to our knowledge. But uh, our mind is very, very limited. Very limited. And we have to remain, remember this. That Jesus is far more. He's able to do far more abundantly and beyond all that we ask. Or think Now, there's nothing wrong with asking according to our knowledge or according to our intelligence. There's nothing wrong with that. Remember that we have another helper. Amen? And he helped us to pray for those things that we don't know. And to pray in a way that uh, maybe we don't understand, but the Holy Spirit is praying for us. Amen? But not only that, uh, again... Our mind is very limited to the mind of God. Sometimes we think that uh, we have reached the limit in our lives. Sometimes we may think that we reach the peak in our lives. We may think that uh, there is nothing ahead. We may think that uh, whatever had had to happen already happened. That there, there's nothing more. Sometimes we think that uh, we, won't, we won't have anything better. Or we can even lose hope. Sometimes in the midst of trials and tribulations, we may think that there is no way out. That there is no solution. At the, or that uh, there's not going to be a change. Why? Because our mind is limited. Our knowledge is limited is limited. As I was saying last Sunday, we only see with our eyes. We only hear with our ears. But brothers and sisters, let's remember that we don't have the mind of the Lord. His plans may be different from ours and far better. That's why God, God tells us in Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor your ways my waves, declares the Lord. And verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Our thoughts, our knowledge, are nothing, brothers and sisters. Amen? Someone said, I just know that I know nothing or something, something like that. <laughs> and he was right. Because the more knowledge, the more knowledge you, you acquire, the more knowledge you know exists. No one, no human being will know everything. Only God. So that's why we need to do the following three things. Number one, we need to trust in the Lord Always. Can you say amen? amen? We need to trust in the Lord always. Even when we don't understand. 
even when we don't know what, what's going to happen the next day, uh, we need to trust in the Lord. Number two, we need to pray and we need to ask. As I was saying, we need to be praying all the time. Pray for you. Pray for your family. Lord, keep me in your, in your path. Lord, bless me. Amen. And number three, we need to be expectant of what God can do. He always has more for us. Can you say amen to that? He always has more for us. And I'm going to tell you the story of uh, the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples. They were, they were going to go fishing and uh, Jesus appeared to them. And I'm going to share with you three, three ways in which the Lord uh, is going to give us more. Because again, he always has more for us. He always has more for you and for you. Amen? He has more for me. Number one, with the disciples, Jesus had a greater purpose for their lives. Let me read John chapter 21, verses 1 to 3. After these things, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, who was called Didymus, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. I'm sorry, seven disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we're also coming with you. So they went out and got into the boat. <coughs> and read the last words with me. And that night they caught nothing. They caught nothing. So what's happening? Uh, after Jesus was resurrected, he had already manifested himself twice to his disciples. And uh, as I told you, this is going to be the third time. But what are the disciples doing? <coughs> They're going back to fishing. Why? Because they don't know God's plan. They don't know God's purposes. They didn't know that God had something more for them. So maybe they thought, this is it. They had been walking with Jesus for three years. They saw the miracles. They heard him preach. They heard him doing wonderful and amazing things. And then they saw him arrested. They saw him dying on the cross. But already they know that he rose from the death. That he is alive. <clears throat> but again, what are they doing? They're going back to fish. They don't know God's purpose. They're ignorant up to this point. So they're doing the best they can. Amen? <clears throat> uh, but as had happened before, they fished all night long. And what happened? They didn't, caught, they didn't catch anything all night. What happened was that they didn't know God's purpose. They were doing, well, what they could according to their knowledge. And that's why I started the message the way I started. Because again, sometimes we're living in our own knowledge. We do as best as we know how. And that's what they were doing. God had different plans. But they don't know those plans yet. So that's why Peter says, all right, <laughs> I'm going to go, go back fishing. Who wants to go with me? And the seven, the other six says, yes, we'll go with you. That's why, brothers and sisters, 
Proverbs 3, 5 says, <clears throat> thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. God bless you. <clears throat> you know, there's a blessing for those who give a glass of water. Amen. Do you know that? <laughs> well, it's, it's for all of us, brothers. Anyway, <clears throat> that's why Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And what it says then, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. And again, verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. What were the disciples doing? They were doing what they knew. They didn't know there was something else. Again, probably they were thinking, this is it. Yes, Jesus is the Messiah. We believe that. Jesus died. He rose again. Brother Solomon, that blessing is for you too. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I'm going to drink it again, so. Salud. Now I have more, more water than what I need. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> again, let's come back to the message. Uh, they were acting, they were living in their own knowledge. Amen? They were doing what, what they do. But brothers and sisters, as Christians, we not only depend on what we know. Or at least we should not depend only in what we know, in the circumstances, in what we see. Because we know there's a higher power. We know there's a higher knowledge. And that's God. Amen? And we know that God had more for them, a greater purpose. God would use the disciples to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. And I was thinking that the same thing can happen to us. Sometimes we may think that we have already achieved everything. Sometimes we may think that there is nothing better ahead. That there are no, that there are no better things for us. That uh, the condition we're in is the condition in which we're going to stay forever. Did that ever happen to you in your life? Let me give you an example. Maybe in, in our marriage. Well, this is my marriage. Nothing is going to improve. <laughs> it is what it is. It's not going to change. And some people sadly decide it's not working. We better end it. They're not trusting in the Lord. They're not thinking about God's will. Well, this is it. Maybe with our children. Maybe our children are, are, are far away from the Lord. Maybe they never accepted Jesus as their Savior. Or maybe they are in drugs or in jail. Or maybe they are worshiping Satan or the craziest thing in the world. And we may think they're lost. We cry for them. Sometimes we pray for them. But we may think they're lost. What about those who are single? I said this several times before. So I'm going to repeat it. But sometimes those who are single may think, Well, I've been waiting for a partner, for a spouse. It hasn't happened. So I think... I'm going to stay living by myself the rest of my life. <laughs> the train is already gone. <laughs> but some others may, may make a big mistake. They think that the good train, the shiny train, is already gone. But here comes a piece of junk. And they think, well, I guess 
This is the only thing for me. I'm going to jump into the train. You know what I'm talking about? All right. What about uh, with our finances? We may think, well, I'm going to be poor all, all my life. <laughs> Or someone who has a business is never going to improve. This is it. Or maybe with our health. I have this condition. This is it. You know what I'm talking about? We may get to a point where we are complacent with the situation we're in. We're not thinking maybe God has something different for us. But just as for the disciples, God has bigger and better plans for our future. That's why Jeremiah 29, 11 says, and this is God speaking, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for what? For prosperity and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. The first thing this verse says that God has plans. God has plans for each one of us. And someone may think, oh yeah, those plans were for me just to be saved and, and that's it. I'm, I'm saved. Uh, that's the end of God's plans. He doesn't have any more plans for us. No, brothers and sisters. He has plans for you. He has plans. And they are not your plans. They are His plans. And His plans are amazing. His plans are wonderful. His plans are, are beautiful. Can you believe it? That's the thing. Sometimes the problem is not in God. The problem is in us. He has plans. And He is, I have plans for you. I want to bless you. I want to prosper you. And we're here. I don't believe anything. <laughs> his plans are for what? For prosperity. That's what the Bible says. For prosperity. Prosperity in all of the areas of our lives. Not only the spiritual area. All areas in our lives. And, and this verse says to give us a future. A, you see? To give us a future and a hope. For, for us Christians, our future is bright. Can you say amen? We have to believe it. We have to confess it. God is so good to us that even our death is a blessing. When we die, what happened? We have a future. Isn't that right? A future in His presence. So God has a better plan for us. Let me ask you this morning. Are you complacent with your situation? Or maybe worse? Is someone this morning who is pessimist about your situation? Because sometimes that happens. We're not only complacent, but sometimes we're pessimist. Oh, this is going to get worse. <laughs> My health is going to get worse. <laughs> My marriage is going to get worse. Everything is going to get worse. <laughs> I call those people joy suckers. Have you ever met a joy, joy sucker? <laughs> you you, you uh, meet a joy sucker and that person only starts complaining and saying the worst things. And in a minute, all your joy is out of you. How different are those people who are always optimists, isn't that right? And happy. And they have faith. They give you faith. They give you jo joy. But uh, number one, God always had a greater, greater purpose for his disciples. And he has a greater purpose for our lives. Can you say amen? amen. Pastor, I am too old. There's nothing more I can do. Everything hurts in my body. <laughs> Well, let me ask you something. Can you pray? 
That's one of the most important and valuable things a Christian can do. If there's nothing else you can do, pray. Amen. Do you remember that woman? I believe her name was Anna. She was waiting for, for the Messiah, for Jesus at the temple. And the Bible says that she had been praying for decades. For decades. And the Bible uh, kind of tells us that that was her ministry. The Bible says, at least the, the Spanish person says, that she served the Lord praying. Praying. We all can do something. Amen. Number two, not only purpose, but Jesus had a greater blessing for his disciples. Let me read verse 4 in John 21. It says, but when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, children, you do not have any fish to eat, do you? They answer, they answer him, no. How many of you like fish, brothers and sisters? Amen. All right. When I was reading this, I was thinking about this fried fish <laughs> mm. with lemon and some tortillas. Well, now some fried bread. I think I'm getting, I get, I'm getting an addiction to fried bread now. <laughs> yummy, yummy. But Jesus says, children, you do not have any fish to eat, do you? They answer him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat and you will find the fish. So they cast it and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great quantity of fish. What was happening? Because they were on their own plan. Think about this. Because they were on their own plan and not on God's purpose. They had worked all night and had nothing. And they were fishers. Peter was a professional fisher. I probably fished three or four times in my life. <laughs> Sometime I went to one of these canals. Brother Vincent, I didn't know anything about licenses or anything like that. I didn't have a license. So, but that, that was forgiving. I asked the Lord for his forgiveness. <laughs> and uh, there was a gentleman who used to live in one of the houses right here. And he took me fishing one day. And uh, that was my, my first time fishing in one of these canals. And uh, they, what, what do they say? Beginner's luck. They didn't cut anything. And I caught a silver fish. I don't know. I know nothing about fishes. I just know how to eat them. <laughs> But it was beautiful. And they told me, do you want to throw it back in? Oh, no. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> I'm going to eat it. So anyways. They, the disciples were, were on their own, doing their own thing, doing, doing what they knew. But if they obey the Lord and cast the net according to his instructions, they would succeed. And the Lord had given them precise instructions. The Lord told them to cast the net on the right hand side of the boat. Now, I'm not a fisherman. And I just told you, I know nothing about fish. But I'm thinking, what's the difference? <laughs> If the fishes are on the right side, they're probably on the left side. That's my knowledge. Human knowledge. But God wanted them to obey. Amen. Cast the net on the right hand side of the boat and the same thing can happen to us sometimes we're doing things our own way and it seems like 
nothing is working. Our marriage is not working. Our business is not working. Our finances are not working. Uh, nothing is working. But brothers and sisters, if we start doing things as God tells us, we will see different results. Look at what happened to the disciples. Verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is John writing this gospel. This is the gospel of John. And it's funny how he talks about himself. huh? Look at this. <laughs> that disciple whom Jesus loved. He was talking about himself. <laughs> uh, said to Peter. Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, garment, <clears throat> for he was stripped for work, and threw himself in, into the sea. I believe that he, he jumped into the water to swim to where Jesus was. Drink from both of them. I don't want them to get angry with me. <laughs> Verse 8. But the other disciples came in the little boat. For they were not far from the land. But about 200 cubits away. And listen to this. Dragging the net full of fish. So when they got out on the land. They saw a charcoal fire already made. And fish place on it and bread. <laughs> Making the message better. Uh, verse 10 Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have now caught. So Simon Peter went up and hauled the net to land, full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. I'm imagining big fish, huge fish. So this is the lesson. With the blessing and instructions of the Lord, they caught a large amount of fish. Why? Because the Lord God is, I mean, Jesus is God Almighty. He has super abundant blessings for you and, and me. Don't think that you've reached everything. Do not believe that there's nothing better for your life. That nothing better is going to happen to you. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you may always have sufficient in all things and abound in every good work. Brothers and sisters, The same way Jesus had more blessings for his disciples, I believe with all my heart that he has more blessings for you and for you and for me. We haven't seen nothing yet. And as I told you before, even our death is a blessing because we're going to the Lord. Amen. God has more blessings for you. God has better purposes, better, better plans for you, and more blessings for you. And number three, Jesus would take greater care of them. Verse 12, Jesus said, said to them, come and have breakfast. Brothers and sisters, do you see that Jesus had breakfast? There's some people that don't, don't have breakfast. Is there any of you crazy people like that here? Brian, you don't have breakfast? Get out of the church. <laughs> It's not Jesus-like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to inquire of him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Now they know it, it's Jesus. Verse 13 Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. And the fish likewise. This was now the third time that Jesus revealed himself to the disciples. After he was raised from the death. 
So when they came to where Jesus was, he had everything ready for them to eat. A fire, a fish. And it's interesting that the Bible doesn't say where Jesus got that fish. But he already had a fish. He had bread and was waiting for them. And I believe that with that action, Jesus was letting them know that he would take care of them. That they had nothing to worry about. He would guide them. He would sustain them. He would bless them in their life and ministry. Sometimes we don't trust the Lord. Sometimes we think that uh, if we believe in him or if we totally surrender to his will, we won't do very well. Let me give you some examples. When I gave my life to the Lord, this is a little, little tiny, small example. You can't even see it. But when I gave my life to the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord says, if someone slap you in one side of, of your face, put the other one. Well, before I, I wasn't a Christian, I wouldn't let anyone do that. If they slapped me on one side, I was ready to jump and <laughs> and kick and do whatever. So sometimes I, I felt uh, weak. This is what I have to do. But God is faithful. Can you say amen? Sometimes uh, uh, we feel that this is another example for some people, not for everyone. But sometimes we feel that If we don't work like crazy, the day has 24 hours. Well, I'm going to work 18. I'm going to work 20. I'm going to have three jobs. If we don't kill ourselves working, we may feel that we don't have enough. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't work. Work is honorable. The Bible says that God works. And also the Bible says that whoever doesn't work should not eat. I work a lot, brothers and sisters. <laughs> But uh, maybe these kind of people, what they need is God's guidance. God can show them a better way. I remember someone who, he was working with the agriculture. He, was, uh, he used to come here in winter and then go to Northern California for summer. And he was working like crazy. And he says that every time he left, he left his home here, he, he would hear her daughter cry. And he left crying because... His daughter was growing without her, without him. And uh, so finally, he quit his job. And God showed him some way, some other way to make money and stay with his family. And of, of course, he thought, what is, what is more valuable, money, stuff, or my daughter? But... Uh, Sometimes that, that may happen. Sometimes we may think that if we give tithes and offerings, we won't have enough for our needs. Sometimes we may think that, and this is for the young people. I, I said this before, but uh, please forgive me, okay? Uh, single young people, sometimes they, they feel like if they ask God, God, bring me that woman that is going to be my girlfriend and then my wife or, or the girl's God, please bring me that man who is going to be my future husband. They think that God will bring an ugly person. But that's where, where you need to have faith. We may think that if we're not honest and honorable, things will go badly for us and we will not prosper. I remember a man that I knew, this was 
over, over 30 years ago. He was an electrician. He gave his life to the Lord. And he started doing things the right way. He started to be an honest person. And one day he told me. Now he's, he's Christian. He was member of the board of the church that I was in. And he told me. Since I gave my life to the Lord. And since I uh, started doing things the right way. An honest way. My business had go down. I'm not making a lot of money. And I thought. Well, what, what was he doing before? <laughs> you know what he was doing, huh? Charging more. Charging for stuff that people didn't need. I, I mean, for things that people didn't need. He needed to trust the Lord. And the reason is that maybe we want to continue fighting by our own means, by our own knowledge. But the Lord encourages us to trust Him fully. He encourages you to trust Him fully. That is not easy, brothers and sisters. It's not easy. But that's what we have to do. Do you remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 25? For this reason I say to you, do not be worried. Do not be worried. How many of you can sincerely say that you were not worried last week? At all. But Jesus says, do not be worried about your life. As to what you will eat or what you will drink. Not for your body. As to what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. That they do not sow, not reap, nor gather. Crops in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? Of course we are. Brothers and sisters, you are more important than a bird. And look at the birds outside. They always have food. The other day I went to the Chevron gas station on 1st Street and 4th Avenue. And I was going to wash my car. And I saw the craziest thing. And on top of the, the arm that is connected with all the wires to that big thing that goes back and forth. You know what I'm talking about? That throws the water and has those spinning things. In the arm that is moving all the time with so much noise. There was a, a dove and a nest She was right there, heating her, her eggs. And I was thinking, this is crazy. What is she doing there? I have some pictures, brothers, in my phone. I'll show them to you next week, okay? <laughs> Probably next week I'll forget. But anyways, God takes care of all his creation. And you are made in his own image. You are more valuable than All the animals in the world. world. Verse 26. Um, I mean verse 27. And which of you by worrying can add a single day to his lifespan? Nothing. Nothing. Verse 28. And why, why are you worried about clothing? Not, not is how the ladies of the field grow. They do not labor. Nor do they spin thread or of, for cloth. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed, like, clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace. Will he not much clothe you, you of little faith? That's how Jesus is calling us. You of little faith. Verse 21, here comes the, the advice. Do not worry then, saying, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear for clothing? For the Gentiles, that's the people that don't believe in God, that don't believe in his word. The Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. 
For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. God, brothers and sisters, he knows everything that we need. Everything. It's okay to ask him. We need, we need to pray. We must pray. We need to ask. But he knows everything. Amen. Verse 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided to you. So all we need to do is to believe. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Usually, we're worrying about today, aren't we? But not only today, we're worrying about tomorrow already. And Tuesday, and Wednesday, <laughs> and Thursday, and the next month. Look at what Philippians 4.19 says. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. All your needs. So we need to trust the Lord more. And we need to rest more in him. When we are able to rest in the Lord, we, we will have rest in our hearts and in our souls. We need not to worry so much and to, or to worry unnecessarily. I'm going to ask you, is there anything you need to trust in the Lord in? Maybe about your marriage or, or your future or your family or your kids or your finances. Would you be willing to trust in the Lord this morning? So God had, I mean, Jesus had more and better things for his disciples. He had a greater purpose. He had greater blessings. And he had a promise that he was going to take care of them. The same promises are for you and me. Amen. Let's pray. Close your eyes. Dear Jesus, this beautiful morning. We thank you for all the blessings that we already have. But Lord, help us to trust in you. Help us to trust in your word. You are great. You are all powerful. You have amazing plans for our lives. But the problem is that sometimes we, for, for, we forget about how great you are. Sometimes we forget that you have those wonderful plans, a wonderful purpose for our lives. So help us to trust more in you. In your own words, would you tell the Lord, Jesus, would you help me trust more in you? Would you strengthen my, my, my faith in you, Lord? Help me to be, to have faith in you, a strong faith in you. Because you have, everything is in your hands. My future is in your hands. My family is in your hands. Everything is in your hands. Help me to trust in you and help me to rest in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right where you are, let me pray for you. I feel in my heart by the Holy Spirit that uh, someone, someone today is troubled in his or her heart. Let me pray for you. Father, In the name of Jesus, I ask you for this person this morning who is troubled. Please, Lord, take away all fear. Take away all anguish. And instead, bring faith, bring confidence into his or her heart. There's nothing impossible for you, Lord. And we can, we can all say to the Lord, Jesus... I receive your peace. I receive your peace, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's trust more in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to...
we're dismissed, but, but if any of you need prayer, uh, I invite you to come here. I'm going to stay here for a couple minutes. If you need prayer, come here and I'll pray with you. Amen. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. See you next uh, Sunday. God willing. Hallelujah. Amen.